I'm the executive director here at Casa Guatemala, and uh, I've been involved with Casa Guatemala since 2001. My original plan was to come as a volunteer for around four months, and I ended up staying almost four years. I really fell in love with what we were doing and the mission and the vision of the organization. I'm really just one tiny part of a big machine. We're such a, a team here. Um, we have our director, Lily, here on site and our administration team in the city, Armando, who runs our maintenance. So. All together, we really, we really kind of make it happen. I'm just the conduit, I think. You know, I, I make sure that the people outside see what we're doing and realize the importance of what it is and send us the funds so that we can continue doing the work. But it's the people here that make it happen and are the real magic. Casa Guatemala from any given time has between um, 150 to 250 kids that we serve whether they're like the students that we have at our school in addition to the kids that come from the surrounding villages to receive medical care and families that we help with just nutritional um, food hampers emergency food hampers for families that are dealing with food scarcity so we really are making a big impact we serve over 30 villages of kids that come in and live on site with us and also come back and forth every day Having that, having a small village here is a huge operational cost. We have our teachers that live here. We have our house parents that are with the kids when they're not in school. We have our administration team, our, our maintenance and transportation teams who drive our boats and run our generators and kind of keep this place standing. It makes up for about 45 people on staff. So our clinic, obviously we have our nurse in our clinic, the cooks that make all the food all the time. It's a pretty big operation. So between salaries, fuel, and then of course feeding 200 people every day, um, we average about $25,000 a month that we need to cover. And you know, and there's always some surprise things that break down that are included in that because inevitably something's gonna break down every month or need replacement just because we've been doing this for so long. So we're always making sure that we're fixing things as we go. Because I have been here for 22 years, um, I have had the opportunity to watch a lot of kids grow up. And if you recall, when Casa Guatemala started, we were an orphanage. So a lot of the kids that I'm really close to are kids that grew up as orphans without a family. And so we've really created a strong family bond. And a lot of them are adults now um, and they have their own kids. So I get to be grandma. And I think that's one of the nicest things for me and kind of feeling the, the reward that I get from this is being a grandma for all of these kids and having my kids who, who elsewise wouldn't have had this sense of family that we all bring to each other, 
that you know they can they can count on me and they can bring their kids and we can have Christmas and birthdays together. Baby, calm down, calm down. Yo, this your body, it puts in my heart for lockdown, for lockdown, oh lockdown. Yo, you sweet life, Fanta, Fanta. If I tell you, say I love you, no day for me, young girl, oh young girl. No, tell me, no, 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 oh, 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 belief system is based on love and empathy and to me that's really what it's all about is teaching them to be loving and empathetic people um, to understand each other and to see each other so that they treat each other well and that they can take that out into the world and, and kind of live that in their best selves um, we want them obviously to be you know happy people honest people um, we want them to work hard and try hard and realize the importance of where they come from. Um, like I said, I want them to feel like this isn't a charity case. This is a scholarship because we see the potential and who they are and we believe in them and we want them to go on because we see who they can be. And it can be really hard, especially when they get to high school and they're on a scholarship and they're going with kids that maybe come from a higher financial background, which, you know, for us would still be, oh, that's still really poor. But for them, it's like, yeah, this kid's got a motorcycle and, you know, mom and dad that can pay for everything and have nice things and a cool phone. And it's like, never be ashamed of who you are. Never be ashamed of where you come from. Never lose the spirit of who you are as a people, remembering the importance of their culture and their history and the perseverance of the Mayan people who have managed to like stand up to oppression and, you know, genocide for hundreds of years and have a sense of extreme sense of pride in who they are and know that even though they are poor on an economic standard of what that word means, they come from such rich and beautiful communities filled with love and nature and, and, and caring of each other and, and, and joy. And that those are the things that are important. And those are the things that they need to have to grow inside so that when they leave, they're not lost in the idea of, oh, I should just buy a lot of things and get some credit card debt because that's what the world is and drink lots of Coca-Cola and eat fried chicken because that's what they really love. Um, so finding the balance of not losing themselves who they are culturally as well. We have friends in common. I wrote you a whole bunch. Check your messenger. I should be in your hidden messages. Um, I mean, come on. Come on down. <laughs>